everyone. I'm Jess and I'm the content manager here at Course Report. Course Report is the resource for helping people find the right coding boot camps for them. You can use the Course Report website to research the best coding boot camps all over the world, as well as insights on which coding languages to learn, where to apply, and how to fund your own coding boot camp experience. Today, I'm speaking with Matt Marsalia, um, the Senior Director of Learning at 2U to get a behind the scenes tour of the UCF Boot Camps Virtual Classroom. So Matt, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. Um, first things first, there are just so many remote boot camps out there now. So what sets the UCF Coding Boot Camp apart? Yeah, thanks Jess for having me. Um, what sets us apart is that if you look at most boot camps today for coding, the way that they teach coding is primarily through you know, Zoom sessions where at a set time, you know, you go you log on to Zoom and an instructor teaches you coding uh, through you know, mixed methods like screen share, breakout rooms, and chat through like Slack or through the chat function in Zoom. And this is primarily what your, your learning experience is. But uh, at UCF, we think there's a better way. We think there's a way to optimize instructor time where instructors can do what instructors do best, which is you know, really reinforcing, uh, extending and integrating new knowledge with what you previously learned. Um, and so this allows instructors to do things like provide feedback, challenge you. Uh, and you can also you know, connect with your peers in a way that's a, a bit more dynamic because everyone comes to the course with a, a base set of knowledge that you can then build upon. Um, so it holds you accountable and it gives you flexibility, but still, you know, having some, some accountability as well. Cool. And I'd heard that UCF, um, the coding bootcamp also allows for some kind of blended learning experience. So I'd love to know what that actually looks like. Yeah. So the, the blended learning experience, you can think of it as you do a lot of your introductory uh, learning uh, online at your own pace. And the way that you uh, learn this ma material is by being uh, embedded into a real world scenario. Uh, it's a narrative where you have to build a project for a client or for a community along the way you learn a lot of the, the concepts and skills for that week. Um, and then when you get to class time, you can uh, you know, practice with you know, more challenging uh, activities that you do in a group or in pairs. Um, you can also go over some like common misconceptions so you can correct it before it gets, you know, too strongly rooted. Um, and then you also have time to, you know, network with your peers um, and get help uh, on any areas before or after class if you're, you know, if you want, you know, more time on a specific uh, topic. Cool. Um, so I'd love if you could tell us a little bit more about what the web development bootcamp actually offers at UCF. Like how long does the program last and what does the curriculum cover? Yeah, so the program is part time. Um, it's 24 weeks and you can really think of it as divided into three phases. We have a foundations phase, a technical phase, and then a performance phase. So the tech, the foundations phase is really just that it's um, covering foundational skills that you'll use throughout your career as a web developer and also that you'll build upon through the course. So these are skills like, you know, Git, GitHub, Terminal, HTML, CSS, and, and JavaScript. And so at the end of each phase, you have a group project. So at the end of this first phase, you have your first group project where you build um, a client side application meaning that it's, you know, it's interactive to a user, but it's not connected to, you know, any sort of database. And then the, the second phase that I, that I brought up is the technical phase. And that's really where you, you learn how the internet works and you become uh, you know, a contributor to the internet. Um, uh, so here we cover um, you know, skills like how to build your own server, connect to a database, learn how to use APIs so that you can leverage you know, other sites code uh, and, and data to uh, make your, your uh, application more rich and dynamic. And so the group project at the end of this phase is where you actually build your first full stack application, meaning it has a, you know, a front end and a back end. And then the last phase, uh, the last eight weeks is your performance phase. And that has a, a dual meaning in the sense that it, it both uh, helps you prepare for the transition from being a, you know, a bootcamp student to being a professional uh, and performing well in interviews and performing well in the first you know, year of your um, new career. And then it also has the sort of the sense of performance uh, as it relates to like your your applications that you're building. 
So they want to be able to, you know, you want to have an efficient code base and you want to be able to have, uh, you know, work that, um, you know, really runs quickly in the browser. So here we're working on skills like React, uh, progressive web apps. We have material on MongoD MongoDB uh, and computer science, particularly for how you would scale applications to a very uh, large user base. Um, and then this culminates with your last group project where you build a single page application that should run very quickly in the browser. Wow, that sounds really comprehensive. Um, that's awesome. So is there an ideal student for this web development bootcamp? There, there really isn't an ideal student. Um, we've seen people from all walks and backgrounds um, be successful in our course. Um, I'd say, and this almost sounds like a cliche, but it's really, if you have sort of the mindset and the understanding that, you know, it takes, um, it takes work to learn and that there's a certain amount of desirable difficulty that, uh, that is positive in learning that like, if you do sort of have moments of struggle, that means it's good that you're actually learning something new and you're, you're, you know, really growing yourself. So if you have the mindset, you, if you can, um, you know, develop a community of people in the class that you can, you know, work with. And if you can have the people in your life kind of give you the space and encouragement to, um, you know, to work on the boot camp, they'll be really successful. And along those lines, does a pr prospective student need to have any kind of coding experience before they even apply? No, you don't need coding experience before you apply. Um, and many of our students don't have coding uh, experience prior to the boot camp. Oh, cool. Um, and just digging a little bit deeper there, um, do applicants need a college degree to get into this boot camp? And do you also need to be associated with UCF, like as a, a college grad or something like that? Yeah, so you don't need a college degree to um, take the boot camp, and you also don't need to be affiliated with UCF as you know a current student or alumni of UCF. Cool. Um, so now that we know a bit more about the actual boot camp, Matt, let's have you share your screen with us so we can tour the virtual classroom at UCF. So, Matt, what does a typical day look like in UCF's remote campus? Yeah. Um, so let's pretend that we just started a new week um, and we're beginning to work through a, a new module for, for the boot camp. So you would begin by logging into uh, the home screen of your course. And this is the home screen. And as you can see, uh, there's a tile for, for every module uh, and there's a module for every week in the boot camp. We have a module zero, which is you know, how to prepare yourself and, and plan ahead for starting the boot camp. Uh, and as you can see, we have 24 modules and then a continuation course, which uh, our course is on Java, C Sharp, Python, and cloud computing, which is material that you can go over after you graduate um, to you know, keep coding as you apply for jobs. But uh, for this uh, example, let's just say we're working on um, module 12 SQL. So we would select this tile. And then the next page we would go to is the menu for a module. And a menu is really comprised of the different lessons uh, that make up a module. There's about five to seven lessons in, in each module, and then there's pages um, with each, uh, within each lesson. So let's go to the intro for module 12. Uh, in each intro to a module, we cover really just at a high level the, the major topics of, of that week. Uh, why they're important to know, how you'd be applying them on the job, um, and how we're going to be learning it this week. And so for, for each, we also have uh, an accompanying video that goes over what to expect in terms of the topics uh, and material covered. But let me ask you a question. When you use a server-side API to get data from another site, where do you think that data comes from? That's right, it comes from a database. In fact, aside from the basic static content of some web pages, data is the foundation of most websites. So as you can see, it talks about what you're going to be learning in relation to what you covered you know, previously uh, in ways that you know, make, a, make a lot of sense. Um, so after you get you know, a brief intro to the major topics that you're going to be covering, we uh, have uh, some background on the project that you're going to be building this week. And as I mentioned, we have real world projects um, where you have to build you know, an application for a client or for a community or you know, for a friend. Um, 
Uh, and so this page really sets up that, that scenario. And I'll play just a few seconds of it. Um, and for module 12, you're going to be building a voting application, um, you know, alongside a group of developers in a meetup community. You've recently started attending a local developers meetup called You Develop It. The group will be voting for a new president soon, and some members have suggested that a custom voting app could facilitate the process. Because you've just learned Express, you volunteered to help with the back end. Another team will handle the front end, so you won't see that side of things until later. Okay. So yeah, cover it kind of gives you the scenario of who's going to be working on what and what sort of what it is your role on this project. So after you have a background on just sort of uh, the scenario they can be building within, uh, as mm -hmm. well as the, the major topics that you're going to cover, we have a, a preview for, for each lesson. And a preview is the first page of a lesson. And what it shows is the, the output that you should be at at the end of that lesson. Mm -hmm. So it starts from, from the end and it shows you where you should be at um, by giving like a screenshot or you know, a, a screen share of what the, the end project looks like or the end uh, sort of milestone looks like. So after the preview, we ask you, how would you approach, you know, tackling this problem? And so we give you, you know, in this example, sort of two ways that you could go uh, in terms of what steps you would take to build, uh, to get to that milestone where we're showing you the candidates. Uh, and the reason why we do this is because often in interviews, um, an employer will, will give you, you know, a set of constraints and an and output that they want to have. And then they'll ask you, you know, hey, Jess, like, how would you go about, you know, building this? Like, what steps would you take? So this, this just gets you in the practice of sort of thinking ahead and, and planning before you get to work. And so as you get further in the course, um, these, uh, so the options you have become a little bit more open, open-ended. Mm -hmm. um, you're not given the steps. You really have to sort of write out what the steps would be. So we think it's a good way for you to practice, like while you're in the boot camp, uh, as opposed to sort of cramming them, you know, uh, cramming that practice at the very end. So after the preview, we jump into the material, and this is what a typical page looks like as you work through a module. Um, because we're just getting set up in uh, th this project, we're doing things like creating a repo and, and creating issues. And throughout the, the boot camp, we use uh, methods like user stories and acceptance criteria as a way for you to um, sort of get comfortable with the types of conventions uh, that are commonly used in, in agile you know, practice on the job. One thing that you'll see very often is what we call callouts. And so these are sort of ways to sort of like wave a hand at you and say, okay, this is you know, important, sort of take some time to, to look this over. Um, and they can serve a lot of different functions. Um, so for example, here we, we have a hint that you can do. Um, it's a way to maybe, uh, you know, learn like a new habit or learn kind of like a new, um, you know, way to, to be more efficient when you are, are working. So we, we offer hints. Um, some other examples that we have are uh, connect the dots. So um, this is where we, connect what you what we just covered with something that you we previously covered so for example here we're relating what we're learning now with with data types which is you know a topic that we earned that we learned uh earlier in the, in the course um and that's what i think is kind of unique about us is that it's not very it's not sort of a um you don't necessarily copy and paste things um uh, along the way to build your projects but you're given um, sort of a lot of context and information about, you know, the, the material that you're covering. Um, so you kind of understand the uh, underlying uh, concepts behind and a lot of the different uh, steps that you take to build this project. Uh, some other examples of these callouts are uh, like a, an important callout, which just highlights something that you should, you know, really spend the time, um, you know, kind of processing and thinking how it relates to what you're doing now. Mm -hmm. We have nerd notes, which are kind of like ways to sort of geek out um, uh, on material, give you a little bit extra, um, you know, information, um, which is kind of a, a, a fun thing to do. Uh, we also have uh, over six hours of video content um, in the boot camp, and we mainly have two types of video content, which are conceptual uh, videos and walkthrough videos. A conceptual video really lays out 
um, concepts, relationships, contrast between um, topics that, that we cover mm -hmm. so you can understand them at sort of a, a more you know, foundational level. So I'll just play a quick clip of what a, a conceptual video looks like. In this video, we'll be looking at how the different components of an application, the client, server, and database all work together and communicate with each other. But first, let's clarify some key terms so we're all on the same page. Yeah, so this is, you know, clarifying some key terms and showing how, you know, client, server, and database all come together and work together. Walkthrough videos, like I mentioned, it has someone screen sharing, um, an expert walking through a bit of code and really sharing their thought process on, on how they're working. For this video, I'll be working exclusively in the terminal. The first thing I need to do is create a database. So I'm gonna type SQLite 3 DB, and DB is the directory I'm storing this in. Okay, so yeah, you can just see two of the most popular types of video uh, that we have. And then just one final thing I wanted to, to show you all is an example of uh, knowledge checks that we have. We, we have these spread out uh, throughout you know, uh, a module and typically we have them at the end of a lesson. So it's an opportunity for you to pause and self-assess where you're at. And so what we'll do is we'll, we'll give you a question. Um, uh, we'll give you some, some context and then ask some questions where you can you know, check your answers. So here we're giving a, you know, a table and we need to answer the following questions. You know, which SQL would return records for home tech and goose? So let's just select this, this middle one mm -hmm. and let's select the, the last one. So as you can see, we got it wrong. Um, it, it, it shows us what it would return. Um, and so we have an opportunity to, to try again. So um, for these examples, you know, we, you get explanative feedback right away, showing you why the, the answer is wrong. Um, it doesn't tell you what the right answer is, so you have another opportunity to, um, um, to try again. And they're not graded, so it's really like a no stakes, low stakes way of, um, you know, checking your knowledge before you uh, apply it on like a homework or a project. And then finally, we have code snapshots, which are um, sample code of what your, your work should look like, what your code base should look like at the end of this lesson. So it's a way for you to compare your code uh, against like, um, you know, sort of a, an expert's code or our um, sort of recommended code. Obviously there's a lot of different ways that you can go about a problem. And we're not saying this is the only way, but it's, it's a little, it's helpful to have this uh, as a comparison so that you can sort of self-assess where you're at and sort of debug if you have any issues. So Matt, what kinds of tools are being used to create community in this online classroom? Like how are students communicating with their instructors as well as their peers in a remote setting? Yeah, so there's a lot of discussion in Slack. And so your class will have its own Slack group um, and it's gonna be divided into different channels. It could be on topics. It could be on you know, asking questions on homeworks. Um, it could be, you know, a, a channel where the instructor or TAs can, can post material. Um, and we also have like a random, you know, channel where you can post like beams and other sorts of, you know, coding uh, jokes and um, sort of that sort of coding culture. Yeah. Um, so it's really, a, really a fun space. Um, and then within class, you know, we have class um, twice a week. And, you know, you can use Slack to um, do group discussion, um, but we also do breakout rooms uh, for, for small group projects. And then you have TAs um, coming around, TAs and instructors coming into the breakout rooms to see how folks are doing, if there's anything that um, they can, you know, help out with. And then additionally, there's uh, office hours before and after class. So you can come to office hours with, with questions that you have. Um, uh, you can also come for like extra exercises on um, topics that traditionally, you know, can be more challenging uh, within a given week. Um, and since this is a remote boot camp, um, what kinds of support can remote students expect from instructors? You mentioned that there's breakout rooms and TAs that are available in the office hours. Um, are there any other like personal interactions between students and their instructors? Yeah, so um, in addition to you know having access to instructors and TAs during class, um, we have something called learning assistance. So if you're 
let's say just you're working through module 12 and you sort of get stuck on, on something or something's not running or you, you have a bug that you don't know how to work through, um, you can reach out to a learning assistant. Uh, we have a, a custom Slack application. So you'd uh, you know tag the learning assistant and then within 10 minutes, you'll get a response. Oh, cool. um, uh, you know, saying, hey, we've got, you know, someone on it. And typically within 30 minutes on average, um, any sort of question is resolved. So you get very quick uh, turnaround time um, from these learning assistants. Cool. Um, and who are the teaching staff? Like, are they from Trilogy or UCF? Yeah, so, so Trilogy uh, recruits, um, uh, recruits, uh, trains, and, and vets uh, candidates to be instructors. Mm. Um, and then UCF will always, you know, finalize uh, folks before a, a, an offer is extended to someone. So yeah, UCF is, is always involved in determining, you know, who teaches the course. Cool. And typically, what is that student to instructor um, or instructive staff ratio at UCF? Yeah, typically we'll have 30 to 40 students uh, in a cohort yeah. um, and one instructor and, and two TAs, sometimes three TAs. So you know, you're talking about a, 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 a 10 to one, um, you know, an eight to one ratio. Okay. Um, I'd love to know if there's any kind of tools or systems in place in this online classroom for students who need extra support. I think you mentioned that you can just go through the Slack channel. Um, so it seems to be separate from the online classroom itself. That's right, yeah. Um, you can reach out to learning assistants uh, and get help right away, as I mentioned. Um, and then we have the office hours before. And so the, the reason why we do that is because it's nice to um, both allow people to sort of raise their hand and say, I need help in a private setting, um, which can kind of, you know, having it in a public setting, people might not feel comfortable, yeah. you know, sort of showing that they have a question, but also it, it allows class time to proceed. Like things aren't sort of being slowed down um, or time isn't spent on a question. Uh, if it only sort of, you know, helps one person or, or you know, a, a few people. Um, so class time can be ran sort of much more efficiently that way. So Matt, what does the Central Florida tech scene look like for a boot camp grad in 2021? Yeah, so I just pulled up Burning Glass reports for the Orlando area. And so Burning Glass is um, a database of, of labor data. So it gives you a sense of what jobs are, um, you know, very popular and in demand, and you know where those jobs are located. And I looked at um, the reports for web developer roles in in Orlando area, and there's a 20% growth in web development uh, over the next 10 years. So 20% is very substantial. Yeah. If you have an eight or nine percent uh, growth for a job, that's really significant. So to be doubling that, it shows that. Um, you know, web development will be, you know, a very popular in demand uh, um, occupation for the next decade. Yeah, that's great to hear. Um, what kinds of resources do you recommend for a beginner who wants to break into tech in 2021? So a great way to um, get started is we have uh, pre-work, um, which is, you know, could be a week or two weeks of experience, depending on how much time you have to commit to pre-work. Um, but it's a way for you to learn some of the, the basic skills that you'll need to sort of start off uh, on a good foot uh, before you start the course. So we cover things like, you know, folder structure, how to use terminal, HTML, CSS, and also things around more sort of, um, you know, planning and sort of how to, you know, block out time um, and just sort of tips for how to be successful in an online environment. Um, and just in your own opinion, why do you think this is like the moment? Um, it's like a good time for someone to go to a remote coding boot camp like UCF boot camp and make this career change into tech. Yeah, I mean, 2020 was a really tough year. Um, and you know what has been sort of evident with web development is that it's been a very strong occupation throughout you know the pandemic. Um, it's even grown uh, for a lot of industries in terms of, you know, the need. Um, so I'd say it's, it's now is a great time because, you know, the, it's a very resilient 
um, uh, occupation. It's, it's high growth. And it's also very, if you talk to, I'd recommend talking to web developers, if you know any before, you know, join the bootcamp. Mm -hmm. I think if you do, you'll, you'll hear that many find it very rewarding, very intellectually stimulating and challenging, and that there's a really good, you know, um, community, both that you might meet, you know, in person when that world, you know, happens and, you know, also online of folks um, to sort of like share knowledge and, you know, try out different approaches. So, um, yeah, I think it's both like, a re, you know, financially rewarding, mm -hmm. intellectually stimulating and, and growing field, which is all you know, sort of nice factors to, to have in a potential new career. And that's an excellent place to wrap up this virtual tour. Thank you so much for talking with me today, Matt. Um, we will be posting a recording and a transcript of this video interview on the course report blog with contact information for UCF boot camps, just in case you're interested in applying to one of their upcoming cohorts. And thank you so much to all of you for watching. Uh, tweet at us, email us, let us know which topic you'd like us to cover next on the Course Report blog. And in the meantime, you can follow Course Report on Facebook and Twitter. And if you're a bootcamp alumni, don't forget to post a review of your bootcamp experience on Course Report. Your review is a huge help to anyone who's thinking of getting into tech today. Thank you.